in their own classes. Thank you so much. All right. So we've been dealing with emotional intelligence class and um, we had um, a break last weekend, which we are proceeding this weekend. So today we are going to be looking at, or in this first lecture, we are going to be looking at proactive thinking, proactive thinking, proactive thinking, proactive thinking. Okay. So let's quickly look at what we are going to look at. We are going to be looking at what is proactive thinking, um, explaining the importance of thinking proactively, list the difference between being proactive versus um, being reactive, explain the proactive process, then explain the techniques to always be proactive, describe how to use self-talk for proactiveness, then explain why uh, understand emotions for proactiveness, explain how to handle your reactions proactively, and then we look at uh, the advantages of proactive thinking and action, and then we look at uh, tips for being proactive. So these are the things we are going to look at very briefly. For the sake of time, I may have to skip through the um, uh, the case study so that we can get to the main lecture. All right, in looking at what proactive thinking is all about, proactive thinking includes estimating a future circumstance and making an arrangement of activity as opposed to sitting tight for occasions to happen or acting in the wake of seeing outcomes. It is getting ready ahead of time to take control of future issues that might happen as opposed to simply changing in accordance with a circumstance sitting tight for something to happen or relying upon someone to take control of the circumstance. So uh, proactive thinking is preempting what could possibly happen and then uh, putting up measures to make sure that you you curtail this, the, the consequences of whatever thing that might happen. Proactive thinking can also be viewed as a um, strategic thinking approach, in which case you are able to um, see situations before they arise. So being proactive means trying to inspect a circumstance, make inquiries, dive into points of interest, clear up questions, and act ahead of time, either to get ready for it or to anticipate it. So proactive thinking keeps you ahead. Proactive thinking gets you ahead of circumstances before they arise. Now, why do we need to think proactively? Proactive thinking and proactive actions is the most essential nature of successful and actually powerful individuals. It includes the predetermined endeavors to change a man's conduct or, or a circumstance and reorienting it into something more proactive. Proactive um, activities or proactive activity manages issues uh, purposely and helps in taking out or tending to misconception and confusion in a more compelling way. So where there are issues that are possibly going to lead to um, misconceptions and confusions, proactive thinking can help resolve those issues even before you get to, to them. Moving to our circumstances with proactivity, we bring about successful response to customers with particular and evolving requirements. It brings about giving an assortment of decisions in performing assignment and upgrades and upgrade basic uh, leadership capacity. Proactive um, activity is profoundly vital in understanding particular needs of clients or partners and responding in like manners by focusing on every detail. How about, um, okay, the next question there is, are you proactive? So how about we investigate uh, your activities in the working environment to find out if you are proactive or reactive? So in such, in such, uh, in this um, statement, it clearly brings to us that you could actually think proactively or you could think reactively. Proactively thinking ahead of the situation, reactively thinking after the situation has occurred. 
So proactive thinking helps to reduce regrets. Reactive thinking actually comes after a whole lot of regrets and hurts had taken place. Now think and answer the following questions about yourself as truthfully as possible with a yes or a no, um, with a yes or a no. Now the first question is, do you respond to the situations occurring around you or do you step up with regards to get ready for, take an interest in as well as control the situation? Was your answer yes or no? Do you play a dynamic or detached part, detached part in issues? Yes or no? Do you think as far as the present or do you look to the future, expecting results and getting ready for the outcomes? Do you settle on a choice just when you need to, when you are gotten into a tough situation or when you are procrastinated for whatever length of time you can? Do you settle on cognizant choices as a major aspect of bigger long haul design? Do you control circumstances by making things happen as opposed to holding up to react after things happen? Do you not sit around waiting for answers to show up, but rather stand up and discover the appropriate responses? Do you always push ahead, look to the future and get things going? Do you always effectively connect and not latently watch and always in an alert, uh, proactive state of mind and art? If you answered a yes to a majority of the questions, when you are definitely then you are definitely a proactive thinker. However, if majority of the answers were no, then you need to get up and take a proactive approach to everyday life. Now quickly, let's look at the differences, being, uh, differences between being proactive and being reactive. Differences between being proactive and being reactive. Reactive thinkers don't step up and let the circumstances choose their activity. They cruise with the tides of life and consider themselves to be casualties of conditions unfit to change their responses and hence feel a greater deal less enabled. They look at change as a condition of amazement, stun, freeze, and respond in a spontaneous, unpleasant way, which does not yield execution of effective solutions. For proactive thinkers, proactive thinkers won't just foresee the dangers they may confront, but additionally outline an arrangement of activity to confront those dangers and act as indicated by the circumstances. They will dependably be prepared to confront a hazard or a trouble with certainty and an arrangement of activity at each progression. Did you know you can greatly increase your proactive attitude by increasing your optimism and by being aware of your feelings and the root cause of each of your feelings? Now, like Elia said, proactive thinking makes for a successful life. If you've been attentive to us in the IPM environment, you'll find that we'll pay a whole lot of attention to um, proactive thinking. We encourage people to think proactively, okay? Think well ahead of time. Think um, uh, uh, five years into the future, think 10 years into the future. And as far as your mind can carry you, if your mind can carry you 20 years, 100 years, 400, 500, 1,000 years, one thing with proactive thinking is that it gets you prepared ahead of circumstances that might throw others off balance. And that is why um, we must engage in proactive thinking. And another wonderful thing about proactive thinking is that it helps you keep control of your emotions. Proactive thinking helps you keep control of your emotion. Instead of um, emotions running wide in cases of contingencies, you get to be in charge of your emotions and be in charge of the situation because you have already foreseen the situation coming, all right? Now, um, I saw something on the news the other day and uh, I was so stunned with that. 
um, I don't know how many of us saw the news as well uh, regarding the National Sports Festival that was taking place or that is taking place. And then the uh, Edo state government said they were going to stop it. I don't know how many of us um, saw that news, the National Sports Festival. If you ever saw that news where they, they were threatening to shut down the sports festival because um, federal government was not in a way committed to it or did not make the necessary arrangement for it. If you ever saw that news, can you please type 00 in the chat room? If you ever saw that news, can you type 00 in the chat room? The, the news about the sports festival. Okay, maybe I'm the only one that uh, saw the news. Okay, so this morning I called one of the one of the officials at the national for the national sports festival, and uh, I was trying to find out why the why the festival was going to stop. The national sports festival was going to stop, and then she said she said a whole lot of things, but at the root of the problem was that the minister of youth and sport was not proactive enough in managing or in planning the national sports festival and that landed them in that serious mess okay so whether we are on on a personal uh, performance basis or corporate performance basis national community level whichever level we must learn to think proactively we must learn to think outside of the box we must learn to um, foresee all possible risks, foresee all possible contingencies that may arise, uh, make all necessary assumptions towards ensuring that our projects are carried out effectively, be it personal project uh, or corporate projects, national community projects or whatever we are doing, all right? So quickly, let's look at the proactive process and um, see how it works. Now, the proactive process, the following are a few key concepts of the Six Sigma process. So the six, what we call Six Sigma or total quality management as, as an essence is a proactive process to ensuring that we have quality standards, to ensuring that we have customer satisfaction, to, to ensuring that we have team effectiveness and cohesion, to ensuring that we have um, compliance, uh, performance and all of that. So what are the key processes involved? Number one, live in an alert state. Live in an alert state. Number two, react consciously. Don't react unconsciously. What we mean by reacting consciously is by reacting consciously simply means you're reacting according to uh, plans you've already laid towards a particular contingency or risks or unforeseen circumstances that might be coming up then have a positive disposition towards life issues. Always accept reality, make informed decisions, then use proactive languages, use proactive languages that are optimistic, all right? Then take deliberate actions, develop a proactive mind, always act ahead, always act ahead, always act ahead, always act ahead, always act ahead. ahead, very, very important. And I will, I will say something about that very briefly. Um, some of us that are already in the corporate world, question number one, when are you retiring? And when, what is your reti retirement plan? Is your retirement plan going to be a transition or is your retirement plan going to be a stoppage plan? Because some, some of us that are already working, our retirement plan is like stoppage. We just finish, we collect our gratuity and pensions and that is all, no more thing. And the same as do we are done with life. Or is it going to be a transition from, from one phase of life to another phase of becoming much more relevant and the likes? So we need to uh, be proactive about, about that. Okay, we need to be proactive about that. How proactive are you with respect to the relationships you're keeping? Starting from the home, the relationship you have at home, up to the relationship you have in the workplace up to the relationship you have in your uh, with external bodies and the likes what how proactive are you with respect to your personal development programs how proactive are you with respect to your uh, uh, 
financial uh, security. How uh, proactive are you with life generally? All of those things need to be considered when we are thinking. I think one of the classes we'll be looking at today is creative thinking. So I'm definitely that by the time we are done with creative thinking and then we merge it with proactive thinking, life will become much more easier for us to handle. All right, live in an alert state. Time after time, we experience life and we never stop to consider what we are doing or why. We get up in the morning and go on autopilot and let it and let it take us as the day progresses. We respond to whatever comes in our direction, sitting above the numerous different decisions we have accessible to us. As individuals, we are in charge of our own lives. Please, I would like us to always remember this. We are absolutely responsible for, our, for the outcomes of our lives. And one of the best ways to be in charge of your life is to be proactive. You are what you are today as a direct result of the decisions you made yesterday. So if your decisions were proactive enough to take care of circumstances that will come up today, then you have a better life. If your decisions weren't proactive enough, then you may have to struggle with life. For every struggling, it simply means we are simply living reactively uh, rather than living proactively. We, we consciously did not put up efforts to help us move in the right direction. My confidence is that for the fact that you uh, made up your mind to attend this class and you have been attending this class for, for, for four weeks now, it is a clear indication that you are a proactive fellow, not a reactive fellow. Okay, and then our assignment is to um, is to challenge our mind to become much more proactive. Maybe we would have been proactive without knowing, but now we have to consciously become proactive in our work, uh, in our daily living. Hence, to be proactive is crucial that you learn to live your life in the alert state of the mind. Um, in a case where salary is not paid, what will happen to your life? Let's assume that salary will not be paid in the next one year. Like uh, it happened at some time in a particular state in Nigeria that they own staff for over 24 months. So in a case like that, how do you manage your finance? How do you manage your life? How do you manage your family and all of that? Okay, some people might not live to see when their salary will end up being paid if they are not proactive because they will end up having high blood pressure, they will end up having um, um, hypertension and all of that. But when we get to be proactive, we can easily deal with such things. Okay, so let's think proactively. All right, that, that will help us. Then reacting cautiously when you lose your temper, encounter means you feel bad, uh, feel bad tempered or uneasy. Um, tarry or reply as well as act before you think. You are responding, not reacting. Proactive people are not influenced by their surroundings or people around them. Their choices and activities do not depend on the outward conditions or anyone else. So reacting consciously means that you would have preempt what could ever happen and you would have chose what decision or you have chosen what action you want to do and how positive the action will impact on the uh, on the situation at hand. So in in default reacting, that's in default responding to issues without thinking through them, you may have to have um, regrets over actions taken. But when you have um, uh, proactive. Um, efforts towards managing your reactions to events as they occur, you will be, it will be much more in charge of the situation rather than the situation being in charge of you. Remember we spoke about emotional hijack. So uh, when you think proactively, there is, there is uh, possibility, very less possibility of um, emotional hijack. But when we do not think proactively, there are high chances of emotional hijack. In the event that someone or somebody is inconsiderate to them, they are not consequently impolite to them. They do not let other individuals choose how they, they will act and respond. Proactive individuals do not accuse whatever transpires in their lives or somebody or something outside of them, and hence do not allow 
the shortcomings of other individual institutions to control them. So proactive individuals are always taking responsibility of, for the outcomes of their lives. They are always taking responsibilities for the outcomes of their life. Proactive people are always taking responsibilities for the outcomes of their lives. And that is, that is very, very important. Have a positive disposition. Proactive individuals do not concentrate or focus on issues and conditions over which they have no control. For instance, if the climate is great, they can rest or they can rest easy. In the event that it isn't, it isn't, they do not let it influence their positive disposition and their execution. The outcome is that they try to develop conditions over which control could be worked out. Subsequently, everything turns into a situation about which there is some hope. Proactive individuals do not need premonition to get ready for a circumstance and they compel themselves to develop game plan to tackle the situation instead of picking a latent laid back behavior. A proactive individual concentrates on real, uh, reaction capacity, the capacity, the capacity and opportunity to pick his reaction. He takes adequate time gap between the event and the reaction for decision of reaction to be made. Then accept reality proactive individuals confront reality and after they after that make a positive objective arrangement of achievement they convey their own climate with them regardless of whatever it rains or or, or sunshine it has no effect to them they are esteem driven and if their esteem is to create great quality work it isn't an element of whether the climate is helpful or not Proactive individuals are esteem driven, get the most of most out of nature and can see and pick their strategy. Being proactive means tolerating moral obligation regarding your states of mind, considerations and practices, as opposed to accusing other individuals, associations or conditions. On the one on the off chance that you are proactive, you can react instead of responding to situations which may give you off balance. They make informed decisions. Decision is the thing that makes us particularly human. We are not machines that must choose between limited options by the way we respond to circumstances, not creatures that are modified via preparing or imports. That is the reason animals are generally respected and man is boundless. In the event that we live like creatures out of our own impulse and molding, we too will become constrained. So to be much more proactive is to make more informed decisions. Then use proactive languages. Proactive and reactive individuals utilize an altogether different sort of dialect to impart the explanations be behind their present state in all life regions. The reactive individuals, uh, the reactive individual talks in order to put forth on anything or anybody other than themselves. These individuals completely trust that they are in truth dedicated by their outer environment. I am not ready to pick my reaction. That is always the way of um, a reactive thinker, which at that point turns into a self-satisfying prescience. So for proactive individuals, they use proactive languages that keep them on top of their games. Then take deliberate actions. To be proactive, you have to take deliberate actions. Of course, by taking deliberate actions, you would have known the pros and cons of the actions you're taking. You would have known the positive and the negative consequences of the actions you're taking. To be proactive, you have to take deliberate actions. You must settle on cognizant decisions of your reactions to circumstances, particularly those that would, those that could, without much of a straight lead you to end up plainly irritated, contemplate internally, and you could say, I pick or I incline towards or I will. Then develop positive state of mind. No matter what happens, if you must be proactive, you must develop positive state of mind. Being proactive might be another state of mind for greater part of us. A considerable measure of the things we do we do them since they have generally been done that way with a specific end goal to achieve an extreme level of adequacy 
one must start by getting to be plainly proactive. All right, so we've seen the process of being proactive and we must put our best to ensuring that we are proactive. Now quickly, let's look at the techniques to always be proactive. What is the techniques to always be proactive? Number one, always be honest about your skills to yourself and others. That will help you to know where you are lacking and where you're not. And then that will help you also prepare your personal or professional development plan to assist you in getting better. Number two, admit your mistakes when you make them and use them as a learning opportunity. Uh, don't make your mistakes build your weaknesses, but rather let your mistakes unveil your weaknesses to you so that you can build your strengths. You can lessen your weaknesses and build your strength. Then ask for help whenever you are not confident about doing something. Then four, try to think, feel, and react appropriately in every situation to build your proactiveness. Always try to keep in mind and to separate what you can do from who you are. Please, very, very important. Always separate what you can do from who you are. Because it's not all you, you are you are, it's not in all cases that you're permitted to do what you can do. In some cases, because of who you are, you may have to restrain from what you can do. In essence, it's not in all situations that you can do what you can do. In some cases, you have to restrain for the purpose of who you are. Then number six, always be aware of who you are or your idea of your self-esteem. Always be aware of your capabilities or what you can do, which is your idea of self-confidence. Keep in mind to understand and differentiate between reactive and proactive. Now, how to be proactive? Sometimes there are times when it's suitable to be receptive. We have a lot of choices to make in the occasion. There are times when we should be adaptable and adjust to a quickly evolving condition. There are times when long haul designs must be relinquished to address prompt issues. So what does this mean? Um, proactive or proactiveness or proactivity does not in a way uh, um, eliminate the fact that there are conditions that we need to um, accept. That's why um, in the process, proactive process, we say learn to accept reality. So in some situations, you need to be receptive to what is happening at the moment. There are things you don't have control over, especially a standard environment can be very dynamic. Okay, so things that you need to be receptive to, you need to be receptive. But before you get to be receptive to them, you must have built capacity to reduce the effect of whatever circumstances could come to your way. Then also, you also need to know that you have to be much more um, quick to change. One of the characteristics of proactiveness is that you must be ready and willing to change. All right, so you must learn to be adaptable and adjust quickly to evolving situations. Then also, uh, proactiveness also means that you have to be strategic. Being able to build or design long-term um, events or long-term activities or long-term plans that can help you manage your future um, exclusively. What's more, there will be dependably be those unavoidable details that even the most proactive individual on the planet would not have possessed the capacity to predict or maintain a strategic distance from them. However, the capacity to be proactive gives an unmistakable preferred standpoint in the environment or in the working environment. And most leaders want, most leaders want that staff individuals should show a, pro, a proactive attitude. The following are a key behaviors that you would require to develop to be proactive. Number one, anticipate. Number two, counteract. Number three, plan. Number four, take part. And number five, perform. Let's quickly look at what each one tries to say. In anticipate with specific end goal to be proactive, you should first create foreknowledge. Proactive individuals are sometimes taken off guard. Figure out how to envision issues and occasions. I want to ask a question very briefly. How many of us know exactly why we are taking this course? You know exactly why you're taking this course. You know exactly why you're taking this course. Type one one in the chat room. You know exactly why you're taking this course. Type one one. Now, 
if you don't know exactly why you're taking this course, but you believe that this course is a strategic course that could bring a positive change to your career or to your life, type two, two. Now, if you don't even know what this whole thing, where it's going to land you at the end of the day, type zero, zero, you know exactly what you're going to use it for type one, one, you don't know uh, what exactly, but, but you have this feeling that there is something unique about this particular course that could change your life or change your career. If you type two, two, then you don't know exactly what to use it for, but you just found yourself here and you feel like it's something you, it's something worth doing. Type zero, zero. Okay, so most people typed uh, one, one. Thank you for typing one, one. Now for the people that typed one, one, can you tell us exactly why you need this program or this certification at this moment in your career. Just type your answer in the chat room. Type your answer in the chat room. Okay, so it's awesome that you know, but for me, when I was doing emotional intelligence, I didn't know exactly what I was doing it for. I've done several courses that I, I didn't know exactly why I was doing them, but there was something within me that made me know that these courses are strategic in nature. They, there is going to be a shift in those domains. And that gave me the confidence to go ahead paying and doing them. But as of the time I was doing it, I was not doing it because I was going to get a job. I was not doing it because I was going to become a consultant one day. I was not doing it because um, it was going to increase my paycheck. No, I was doing it um, because I felt it was going to drive change and I am just open to change. All right. Okay. So Dr. Um, Oduna Yaragunda, they say he wants to take the course to be a facilitator. So that's why he is taking the course. All right. So for all the people that typed one, one, can you be more specific? Why are you taking the course? Okay. So Dr. Aragunda, they, what do you anticipate in the facilitation? What do you anticipate by taking this course? What do you anticipate as a facilitator in EI? What are your anticipations? What are your anticipations? I'm still waiting for those who know exactly what they are doing, why they are doing this course. All right, then the next thing there is to counteract. The next thing there is to counteract. I'll be waiting for all the answers to, to be able to, to manage my situations better. Okay, that's from Samuel. Why for? All right, thank you. See how things function. Search for designs. Perceive the standard schedules, everyday practices, and regular circles that uh, exist in your business. In the meantime, don't wind up bluntly or bluntly careless. Utilize your creative energy while expecting future results. Why expecting future results? Why expecting future results? Don't just anticipate that the past will dependably uh, be uh, a precise indicator for the future. Utilize your incentiveness or inventiveness rather and rationale. Think of various situations for how occasions could uh, unfold. Then proactive individuals are always on their toes. Okay. Proactive individuals are always on their toes. Now, the next thing is counteract. Proactive individuals anticipate potential uh, snacks and um, apply their energy to discover um, approaches to defeat them before those obstructions transform into solid barricades. They forestall issues that others could basically think as avoidable. Try not to be emotionally weak in times of distress. At the point when challenges approach, take control and def uh, def defeat them they feed them head on before they develop into overpowering issues. Then plan. Of course, we know that planning is also a very proactive way of dealing with issues. Proactive individuals get ready for what's to come. Stay away from hasty decisions. Consider and rather look forward and efficient long haul outcome. Bring the future into the present. Um, into the present, what would you be able to do today to guarantee achievement tomorrow. All of these things need to be taken 
into consideration when we are planning. Try not to set two on choices in a vacuum. Each choice is a connection of vocations, prompting one last conclusion. Keeping in mind the end goal to set two on the best choice, you need to know where the issue originated from, where you are, where you are with the issue, and where you need to wind up. Take part. Proactive individuals are no are not onlookers. They are dynamic members with a specific end goal to be proactive. You should get included. You need to step up and be a piece of the arrangement. Now, uh, yesterday I had a wonderful uh, meeting uh, with someone I respect so much who happens to be a general in the Nigerian army. And when, while talking with him, you will find out that it's not that his dependency is not on the fact that he's a general. He has a whole lot of plans that will even unfold even after his, uh, his life as a general. Now, most of the plans that he's having are plans that will be things that will introduce the change that he will manage. His plans will introduce the change that he will manage. So if you want to be on top of the game, you have to take part in ensuring that the change advances and then you are part of the people managing those changes. Don't wait for change to come before you become to before you become part of the change. You need to be part of the initiators of the change to be in charge of the change. All right, so take part of the change. Take part of that now. For few of us in Nigeria, for few of us in Nigeria, so far so good. IIPM is the only institution in Nigeria that is running certificate program or certification in EI. Okay, we are the only institution in Nigeria. Others are doing workshops. Yes, others are doing uh, staff training and all of that. But so far, so good. In Nigeria, we are the only institute that is running a um, professional program in emotional intelligence. Okay, and we are the only institution that have international partnership to secure chartered emotional intelligence professional here in Nigeria. Now, what made us go that extra leg? Having taking a look at where the nature of work is going or the future of work is going, we discovered that one of the most essential part of the future of work is moving from technical to soft skills. Yes, future of work is moving from technical skills to soft skills. And if you look at emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence empowers you more to, to, to manage or empowers you with soft skills to be able to deliver your technical skills effectively and efficiently. If you look at the future of work, you will agree with me that HR practices are dynamically changing. Take a look at recruitment. Recruitment has greatly evolved. Okay. Um, there was a research I was reading some time ago, and the research said that recruitment today is 89% recruitment. Competencies considered recruitment, 89% are considered for, for EI skills, EI skills. So all soft skills are basically tending towards EI skills. So in that case, it means that less than 20% is now for technicality, all right? And also, if you check at performance appraisals, you find out that today organizations are working with 360 degrees appraisal process rather than the 180 degree. Instead of supervisors um, appraising their um, subordinates only, we now have a 360 degree system that subordinates can also appraise their superiors and superiors appraise their subordinates. And then we'll have peer to peer appraisals and all of that, which will give a more balanced view to performance and appraisal systems. Now, if you really want to be part of these changes, then you must be proactive enough to drive these changes. When we started um, dealing with emotional intelligence courses in Nigeria, people didn't understand what it was all about. Yes, it wasn't 
as of 2012, it wasn't a well-known concept, okay? Even we, that we are bringing it out, we, we are not too sure of the receptivity of the course, but we kept on advancing ourselves. We kept on networking with brighter minds. We kept on networking with international organizations who will help us build up models that will help us integrate it to the Nigerian environment and the African environment as a whole. And today, uh, we could clearly say we are not we are not going to say we have achieved um, our concept of emotional intelligence hundred percent, but to a great extent we are doing well. Okay, we are doing well. And one of the confidence that we have is that there are going to be a whole lot of consultants coming out from these classes who are going to focus on EI. And what they are going to do is that they are going to help penetrate into the roots in the corporate world, in the government world, public world, they are going to penetrate and then help bring EI to reality in the Nigerian context and the African context as a whole. So what we are doing is like a grassroots assignment. Okay, it's like a grassroots assignment. And we are not just going to stop at issuing certificates. We are already working on models to ensure that we have chartered Nigerian government or the African government as it were for those in different countries. But for us in Nigeria, we are, we are already working on having a chartered EI Institute in Nigeria, which will much more give the EI professionals um, legal backup to implement EI practices, EI processes, EI systems, and dynamically invade the corporate world, the public world, with EI practices that will make for better work performance. So we are not just stopping our training. We are advancing to future um, opportunities that will make this whole thing a better success. So we must take part in it. We mustn't just teach it. We mustn't just facilitate it. We must also drive the change. We must drive this. So in a few more weeks, months, or years, as it were, we are going to have the Chartered Institute of EI professionals to, to monitor and to regulate the practice of EI in Nigeria. And also, we are looking at also working with institutions, universities across Nigeria, across Africa, to ensure that there is a domicile approach to EI, especially in the social science faculty. Okay, so the way we have general studies, we are looking at uh, collaborating with universities to ensure that there is also going to be general studies on emotional intelligence. Because at, this, at the moment, there is no institution in Nigeria that has general studies on emotional intelligence, all right? So uh, departments like departments of psychology, departments of uh, social psychology, uh, departments of economics, all those areas uh, are going to, we are going to work with them, departments of philosophy, we are going to work with them to ensure that this whole thing called EI is ingrained in the educational system. So we must be part of this change we want to bring. We are not just going to teach and then sit back and say, okay, uh, let the people with, with thought go and do the work. No, all of us are going to be taking part in ensuring that this whole thing comes to play, all right? So it's not just a certificate thing, it's a movement, okay, that is um, working towards ensuring that we have better workplaces, a better government, better leadership, better life, all right? So we must all take part of it, okay? Well, if you want to wait and say, let them do it, then I will join them. You would have been a late adop uh, adopter to the whole process. Early adopters will always have um, an upper hand. So as we proceed, and also that creates some levels of um, explanation why we are pushing out our membership programs at the moment. Our membership programs, I think today is the last day for the discounted membership program, all right? Now, if, um, not if, because definitely we'll get there. When we move to the point of becoming a chartered institute for EI, obviously, by that time, if you're coming to get membership, it will not be whatever that you're going to pay today. All right? So whatever step we're taking, we're making it on proactive basis. We are not just taking them because we want to generate money and then save the money, no, or want to generate money to spend or generate money to pay our staff, no. Whatever thing we are doing, we are doing it 
to have enough people who believe in the movement and then be part of it. Some of us are excited to get chartered from CIMC USA, but there is going to be much more domicile uh, power to those who have their charter in Nigeria or in their own respective countries, because that's going to give more force. You're going to have a government backup from your own country, and then you're also going to have international backup to whatever thing you're doing. That gives you a more prevalent um, advantage, all right? So by taking part in driving the change, you become much more proactive, okay? Some people are still finding it difficult why they should, um, why they should pay for membership, okay? And sometimes I try to wonder, if you're going for a professional course and you don't want to become a member, then what are you going for? It simply means that you are not well aware of the whole circle. All right. And please, if you have questions, feel free to ask. We send you emails. I personally do the emails, or I personally sent an email uh, because I was trying to see if I can explain. But it's like my explanation didn't work out uh, as expected. I didn't explain well. All right. So let's take part in it. Let's take part in it. And then finally, you need to be a performer. Being proactive means taking auspicious, viable activity. You will be, you will be conclusive and willing to take every necessary step now. Delaying is impossible. There is something that happened this year, okay? Um, early this year, or was it last year? Uh, there had been this pursuit to have chartered Institute of Project Management in Nigeria. And late last year or early this year, that was done. Now, those people that we are asked to pay for membership for Institute of Management uh, Professionals in Nigeria, uh, I think membership fees then was 50,000 era. But after the, the, the institute was chartered, that will now have CIPM and that's chartered is a project management professional in Nigeria. Their membership is 250,000 era. Can you imagine the change? Because it was chartered, it now moved to 250,000 from 50,000 to 250,000 era and people were paying. So is it that you get to be proactive or you get to be reactive? Whichever way, there's always a cost to being reactive, all right? All right. Okay, uh, let me see how to round up. My time is moving so fast. How to use self-talk for proactiveness? How to use self-talk for proactiveness? Self-talk, uh, Self-talk is one of the most effective methods to stay proactive, positive, and to drive yourself. Using the method of self-talking, you, you should um, kind of brainwash yourself by continuously telling yourself to be proactive and alert to situations in the, pre in the present as well as in the future. So every single day, you reiterate to yourself and repeat to yourself your good qualities, how good a person you are, how much you will achieve, the direction that you are going in and want to go in, you, your overall feelings and belief about how good life is and so on. A good practice to use self-talk to stay proactive and positive is by preparing a positive speech about yourself. Repeating this speech to yourself first, th first thing in the morning, if possible, by staying or by saying out loud in front of a mirror. That could be a wonderful way to keep a positive self-talk uh, or keeping proactive by using positive self-talk. Also, at the end of each day, look back on the day and the things that you achieved throughout the day. It could be as simple as finding an issue, avoiding an argument, not reacting in a bad situation and so on. Now, go through your achievement of the day in your mind before going to sleep and congratulate and praise yourself for achievement. Proactive self-talk phrases. You can do everything, but not at all, not all at once. You can do everything if it's important enough for you to do. You can do everything, but you may not be the best at everything. You can do everything, but there will be limitations. You can do everything, but you need help. Develop proactive attitude through self-talk. Look at the following quotes that I have developed and uh, stress on the relevance of always having a proactive attitude. A proactive thought is the seed of a proactive action. If you really want to be happy, nobody can stop you. The most significant change is a change of attitude. Right attitudes produce right actions. A proactive attitude is not a destination. It is a way of life. If you don't like something, change it. 
if you can't change it, change your attitude. Whether a glass, whether a glass, if half full or half empty, depends on the attitude of the person looking at it. There is a better way for everything. Find it. You will only go as far as you think you can go. So if we have better self-talk, then we have better life. The man with confidence in himself gains the confidence of others. The proactive thinker sees the invisible, feels the intangible, and achieves the impossible. The biggest mistake of all is to avoid situations in which you might make a mistake. Our life is a reflection of our attitudes. Difference between successful person and others is not a lack of knowledge, but a lack of will. No man fails if he does his best. A proactive attitude is like a magnet for positive results. Attitude, not attitude, determines your altitude. So there are quite a number of self-talk and change of mind you need to do to ensure that you have um, to ensure that you have proactive thinking. Control your mind to automate proactive thinking. Of course, we know that thinking lies in the mind. Think of your brain as a computer. Research studies have shown that your brain never tries to prove you wrong. Just like a computer, your brain will simply run the program it is given. Your mind can only pull up what you have programmed in. When you say that you can do something, your brain will help you by running the how program. When you say that you can't do something, your brain can only run the why, the why program. So choose your words wisely. Um, some of us could have noticed that all through last week, uh, we couldn't respond to most emails. We couldn't respond to most chats in the chat room. The truth is this week had been so, so busy. Uh, we've been involved in a whole lot of training. From Monday to yesterday, we've been involved in a training, in a national training. And uh, while I was in that training, in my own section during the training, um, I think my, part of my training was on uh, part of emotional intelligence, yes. So I was talking about the mind. And then I said something, I said, every man's life currently is a function of what their thoughts had given them. And so many people in that class, irrespective of the fact that people in the class were people who money wasn't their concern, but they tried to, to argue it out. By the end of the day, everybody came to the conclusion that yes, every man is absolutely responsible for the outcome of his life. And truly as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you want to advance, think better. I get very, I, I recommended a book in our last class, that's uh, Thinking for a Change by John C. Maxwell. I don't know how many of us have gotten that book, but if you've not, please do yourself a favor and get that book. Do yourself a favor and get that book. Anything that will, any, any environment that will make you think better, think good, please make sure you exploit those things and use them to your own good, all right? Thank you so much. Now we have uh, used visualization for proactive, productivity and success. Use visualization for productivity and success. Visualization is the process of creating detailed mental pictures of the behaviors you wish to carry out. You can use imagination to create these mental pictures. Please, my time will be rounding up exactly at 10 a.m. Uh, before the next lecturer comes in. Please, if you have a question for me, I will only take one question and then uh, I would uh, allow the lecturer to come in. So if you have a question for me, just raise your hand so that as soon as I'm done, I'll take the question. And um, for other questions, just put them in the chat room. I'll be reading them as I'm taking my class. Then I can answer them alongside the, the one that um, is raised, please. So use visualization as a way of productivity. Imagination is the creative power of the mind. A secret to proactiveness and success is to use your imagination to see yourself as the person you want to become. Always see yourself as the person you want to become and work towards it with your visualization. While visualizing, it is imperative to focus on the positive. As you visualize, notice and dispute negative thoughts with positive affirmations. You can Use visualization to harness the power of the subconscious mind to become more proactive. Visualize yourself um, being proactive and succeeding, and you will succeed. Tips, being proactive does not mean uh, that you should become less emotional. 
Being, pro being proactive means that you should be more aware of, able to identify and handle your emotions and be smart about your emotions. And please, this is where I'm going to stop in this class. We will complete this class and then upload it through the YouTube class and then you can get all of it. For now, thank you so much for your time. And um, in the next class, we will be uh, looking at some other things. If time permits me today to conclude this class, I will definitely do so. But else, I will ensure to make sure I complete the lecture and then upload it to the YouTube and then we can all view with it. Thank you so much. Uh, then I will take my question now.